Um, hi, good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here and share our research experience. Uh, my name is Liang Liang Cao, and uh, I'm a research scientist and manager at Google New York. I'm also uh, associated with uh, UMass as a research professor. Today, I'm going to talk about our work on improving facial and speech recognition on auto-domain data. Uh, so before this talk, I'd thank my colleague at UMass and Google, especially um, at UMass, Aruni, Bruce, Vikita, uh, Asish, Shou Yang, Huai Zhu, and Eric, and at Google, uh, Chu Chen, Arun, Wei, Rohit, Yu, uh, Navdeep, Roaming, Tara, Patrick, Yonghui. Uh, especially all the pictures on the visual reaction part are from Aruni's uh, CVPR 19 with author's consent. Uh, so uh, the problem, why auto-domain recognition is an important problem? Uh, as a status of 2020, most popular machine learning work follow the following paradigm. First, we collect the data set, and then we split into training and testing set. Uh, note that the training and testing data set are all the same distribution. At last, uh, we either use this data set or use other data set, train a model, on the training set and the report performance on testing set. But what about auto domain data? Uh, so very few works as the best of our knowledge discuss the performance for auto domain data. And uh, uh, even if the model, a model can get a very high accuracy on the on, on the testing set, uh, the accuracy may be generated significantly for auto domain. Uh, so here is the example of auto-domain recognition. On the left, um, we can train a pedestrian detection detector um, for uh, daytime sunny uh, pictures. Uh, but uh, when we consider testing such detector on um, evening picture, night picture, or in this case, the frog, the, 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 the wheel in the frog, and uh, uh, we cannot guarantee such detection will work very reliably. As a result, we feel auto domain recognition is an important problem, and that's the pro topic we are going to discuss today. Uh, so for auto domain recognition problem, we have two constraints. First, uh, we uh, need no label or very limited labels for auto domain. And then we prefer one model instead of many models because if there are many models, uh, it will bring huge uh, cost for uh, serving these models and uh, maintain the quality for many models. And uh, for uh, this big picture, we consider two. We are going to show uh, two studies. First is visual detection. Another is speech recognition. The first study is on visual detection. It's based on paper from 3PR 2019 with my colleague at UMass. Uh, so uh, the video here, the example video here, are taken from open source uh, IGBS dataset. Note, note that the, 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 all the data here in this study is public. It's not related to Google at all. Uh, so we tested, we use uh, the MDNet tracker and uh, on this video data set, you can see that some frames, on some frames, uh, the face uh, uh, detector works pretty well, but in other frames, uh, the face uh, detection is not, uh, are not uh, capturing all the cases. Uh, so the big picture of this, pic this, this paper is, given a video, we can run a detector and a tracker on the same video. So uh, we can use a tracker and the spatial uh, tempo consistency to verify the detection result. And further, by jointly considering the tracking and the detection result, we can distinguish, distinguish easy and hard examples. On the picture, on the right picture, uh, the, uh, the, the the green box uh, corresponds to uh, easy examples. The red box corresponds to hard examples. 
What's the difference? The difference is easy samples are those detector succeeds with high confidence, and hard positives are hard examples are those missed by detector but pick up by tracker. Uh, so uh, based on these two type of uh, positive examples, hard, easy, and hard, we uh, we can. Uh, de develop a new training strategy. Uh, we call that distillation training. And in this training, we want to emphasize um, we want to emphasize hard examples, but still want to be successful on easy examples. So in this picture, we left two green box denoted the left two uh, boxes. Um, uh, then are the easy examples, and as 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 before, and the yellow box are the, is the hard example, and the S means the, the detection score in the in the in the base model, and the Y is the new label we are going to assign, and you can see that we will keep the uh, same prediction scores on the easy example, which Y Y one equals S one and Y two equals S two, however. We want to emphasize the label on hard examples. Thus, we keep the hard example y3 equal to y. And there are also other constraints. Uh, details, please see our CVPR paper. Uh, the, the big picture is, uh, the big idea is, if we can retrain the model, I mean, we can, if take, taken, given an uh, unlabeled video, we can combine the detection and the tracking result together and find the easy and hard example. And with this easy and hard example, we can retrain the model so that uh, the model will be, uh, behave, uh, perform better in these unlabeled scenarios. So we test our model on Berkeley Deep Drive. It's called BDD100K data set. We use clean daytime image, images for training and use slowly running cloudy dust data for auto domain testing. The baseline was trained from clean daytime dataset, and uh, our method is applied to using unsupervised videos from dataset. When testing on the auto domain, our method improved average precision from 15. Uh, Average equals 15.21% to 28%, more than 28%. Uh, the picture above demonstrates example of detection results. Uh, the, the baseline model fails to detect some pedestrian on image taken during dust, but our work uh, can recognize them correctly. And uh, the green box on the, in the corner shows that our in our improved detection, our model can recognize the dust image uh, successfully. Uh, note that the work on visual recognition is still a research period, so it's nothing related to Google product. And but in this case, we are more open to uh, new testing, new research ideas, uh, and more tolerated with a relatively low AP. But in the next, I'm going to introduce another uh, study which is close, uh, closely related to production. So uh, the second uh, work is on speech recognition. It's based on a paper submitted to Interspeech 2020. Uh, my team and my colleague at Google is, uh, are still working extensively on this topic. So the topic, uh, the paper is called RNT model. So what is RNT model? So RNT model is the full name is RN transducer. So that's a recent uh, 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 speech recognition model. Uh, traditionally, we, we call conventional uh, speech recognition are uh, is composed usually composed by uh, several parts, uh, two components in this case. Uh, one is called acoustic model, another is a longer model. Uh, so you may see in the past decade a lot of research work has the uh, try to use a uh, neural network to uh, improve acoustic model uh, in AM in this case. Especially, um, you can see uh, a good survey is in uh, Jeffrey Hinton's uh, signal processing 2012. Uh, but in the last, uh, two or last one or two years, um, they are trying to improve uh, the recognition models by introducing end-to-end -end model. 
So RNT is such kind of end-to-end -end model that unifies AM uh, acoustic model and LM long-term model into one. And, uh, and it can be used for streaming purposes. Compared with the conventional model, a big advantage of RNT is that it is 10 times smaller than the conventional, conventional AM and the plus um, LM models. The picture on the right demo, uh, just roughly uh, uh, describe what RNT model look like. So suppose we have sequential uh, data like audio, we have an encoder which map each audio feature X into a hidden uh, uh, representation called H. And the encoder will work together with a prediction network. Sometimes it's also called a decoder. So decoder will take the previous um, uh, state uh, and together with the current hidden variable H and then decode uh, all kinds of uh, speech, uh, speech uh, kind of in this case, sometimes a graphene or word piece. So basically we uh, can uh, estimate from uh, audio sequence to, uh, uh, trans to, to a text sequence. And such RNT uh, transducer is, uh, is widely used in many Google products. So uh, we are still, because RNT model is very new, we are still in the early stage to understand um, its, uh, when it is, uh, its advantage and its limits. So one thing, one very uh, surprising phenomenon we saw is the RNT uh, models may not work well for auto-domain data. Especially when the training set is uh, short and the testing set is long, you can see huge deletion errors for uh, auto-domain. Uh, here, I just want to show um, one uh, example from the public data set. Uh, the table shows that um, uh, the table shows that the model trained from labor speech, that's a public um, uh, audio speech recognition data set, and test on YouTube. We use the word error rate uh, to measure the, the performance. Uh, the word error rate is to measure how many words are recognized uh, correctly, I mean incorrectly, the, the error. And uh, there are three types of word error rate, uh, word errors, deletion, substitution, and uh, insertion. And uh, we, are, we found that deletion error is particularly important for auto-domain testing. So this table shows the word error rate uh, slashed by deletion errors. And you can see that the model trained from liver speech get pretty good results on the liver speech clean test, which is 3.2. Uh, that means 100 words, we only have about three words recognized incorrectly. I know that that was very strict, even some uh, compounds are, can be also recognized wrongly. Uh, so 3% is pretty close to what a human can, can humans limit of transcribing audios. And the liberty speech test is, is, is kind of a little bit noisy, but the recognition accuracy is 7%, 7.8%, which are normal. But the big surprise when we come to apply the model to YouTube, in this case, YouTube shot is a kind of like cut YouTube into short clips. And the recognition error is uh, 99%. So if we look closer, we see that most of these errors are deletion errors, which is 99.5. That was a big surprise for us. And uh, in the past year, probably this year also, uh, our team and a lot of my colleagues have been uh, studying this and try to try different ways to solve uh, those kind of auto domain deletion errors. And uh, we need, we first analyze the cause of deletion errors. And uh, since end to end model learn all the components jointly, the effect is more pronounced than uh, conventional models. And uh, end to end models trained from one domain. Uh, such as short utterances may not perform well for auto domain data. And to analyze further, we uh, try to look at the word error rate for uh, in, in domain. In this case, we call search 
and then test it for all domain data. In this case, uh, uh, the, 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 the audio book. So the picture on the right shows that if we freeze the encoder, and then the generalization errors will become lower and lower with more steps. However, if we um, do not freeze the encoder, we uh, keep updating the parameters in encoder, we can see after 10k steps, the WER goes very high, means uh, the, the, uh, the auto-domain uh, uh, errors become very serious. So the conclusion is, um, the high deletion errors is more related to encoder than prediction as. So by understanding the problem, we propose uh, two, two groups of solutions. The first is we try different kinds of regulation uh, method to regulate the encoder during training. We call that a, a cocktail method, which includes three uh, components, first variation noise, and then random state uh, sampling, and the random state passing. And then uh, we also introduced the spectral org. Uh, so the cocktail works well. You can see after this cocktail method, the model, uh, the model, the, the performance, um, uh, the WER uh, reduced from 67% uh, uh, on YouTube data to 25%. And also another technique we saw we found very useful is called the dynamic overlapping, which is uh, we. Uh, we split audio into short durations. For example, in these 16 uh, seconds with small overlap, and then recognize the audio, and then uh, uh, then map them together. So this method can work very reliably and reduce the WER2. So to conclude our work, uh, uh, this talk is auto-domain data is often challenging for uh, deep networks. We are considering sequential data, including video and audios, and hope to apply self-supervised learning to reduce the, to improve the recognition models. And we have seen successful studies, uh, two successful studies in visual detection and speech recognition. Um, and we hope to keep uh, pushing these directions. But the ultimate goal is to hopefully to have one model which works in all scenarios. Uh, that's the end of my talk. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm open to questions.